Let's head now to South Africa, where China has called on BRIC nations to reject protectionism as part of a fight back against Donald Trump's trade agenda. Leaders from the five countries are gathering in Johannesburg for a three-day summit. And joining us now from that summit in Joburg is Bob Van Dyke. He's the CEO of NASPERS, which is the largest company by market value on the entire African continent. Bob, thanks very much for your time. Uh, let me let me first get your thoughts on this burgeoning trade war. It looks like Juncker and uh, and Trump have been able to negotiate some kind of deal for the U.S. Uh, European relations. Are you are you hoping for the same kind of thing between the U.S. and China, where you have a, a big stake in the in the economy and in the business environment? No, I, I think it would absolutely be best for, for the world economy to, uh, to, to not let that what is going on escalate. I think that would be uh, in everybody's best interest. If you look at how we operate as, as a group, we mainly actually do business in country. So uh, it holds for, for, for China, but also for India and, and in Africa. We typically do consumer business that is very focused on domestic markets. And we back local entrepreneurs that run a local business. Um, so it's not necessarily of deep impact for us, but I think for the world at large, it would clearly be the better outcome. So it doesn't affect, I mean, because of your stakes mostly in online companies like Tencent, uh, like Flipkart, for example, this kind of trade dispute doesn't affect you because you, you're, you're so domestically oriented is what you're saying. That, that is right. So if you look, for example, take Flipkart. I think Flipkart is a, is a company that's run in India uh, by, by Indian entrepreneurs and their customers are Indian as well. And the vast majority of their sourcing also happens in India. So it could have some effect on consumer pricing over time, which would be, uh, which would be somewhat dis disappointing for Indian customers. But in terms of, of the, the business that we've actually invested in, it's very much a domestic business, not particularly dependent on, on cross-border trade. So I think our businesses uh, are typically quite robust bust uh, in, in sort of the, the near to medium term uh, for, any, for any trade wars. But I think at, at, at large for the economy, it's obviously a, a strong negative if we, if we move further in the, in the wrong direction. Talk, talk to me, Bob, for a minute about the payments uh, business. You've made some investments in, in to that space. And it's not, I don't think European investors are so clear on how big and how important this is for that region. No, it is right. So I think you, particularly if you're if you're U.S. based, I think the, the it's easy to underestimate the potential of particularly mobile payments um, in the world, right? I think you you may know the statistic, but the number of mobile payments in China is about 50x of that in the U.S. at this point in time, and and if you look at India as well, the speed at which India is going digital in payments is is breathtaking. Uh, for example, there's there's an initiative sponsored by uh, by the Indian government which is called UPI which has gone from zero about 18 months ago to now doing more than 200 million mobile uh, transactions um, a month. And so the speed at which the payments is, um, is becoming mobile and, and online in, um, in, in the BRICS world is, is breathtaking. And it's something we are particularly excited about. We've already deployed several billions uh, against that opportunity. And we, uh, we have the intention to, to make that a, a spearhead of our further investment uh, strategy. So we, we expect to invest several billions more in that, in that space. I also wonder about the, the kind of value gap between uh, NASPERS and Tencent. Um, how do you close that? Are there, are there other businesses that you're considering listing, selling off? How does that work? <clears throat> yeah, so, so I think the, um, if you look at the, the, the gap between uh, the sum of the parts of, of the company and, and the market, uh, there's clearly an issue that we need to address, and we take it very seriously. Um, now, it's mainly driven by some structural factors. The most important one is actually how big we have become as a share on, uh, on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. So I think not logical next steps for us would be to list parts of the business and to see if we uh, can, can reduce that overall size. And, um, and, and I think those are the, the structural options we were considering and discussing with our board.